So can you use the EG4 charge verter GC over here with grid power, plug that thing up to grid power, the charger batteries back in your system. All right, as you may be able to see, we've had a little uh, winter weather down here in North Carolina. And basically this is kind of the next day after we had this little ice uh, event here. And uh, we were thinking hopefully we get some snow, but as you can see, probably on the panels over here, As you can see right there, mainly just ice. So basically what I did to make sure, just in case we lost power, which, you know, we didn't lose grid power or whatever, but I wanted to charge my batteries up fully to make sure that the power went out. Hey, I'm gonna be good to go because all everything in my house is ran on electric. And so the charge verter GC, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I got it hooked up. Basically, I just ran the plug from the uh, charge verter GC over to my EV charger on the grid on my house. Basically, I had half my house running on solar, so if you don't know, basically got this part of my house over here, got a sub panel on this part of my house, this addition part, and then my main part of my house, my main part of my house that is on the other side over here, you know, it's on my main panel, which is right on the other side of the wall here. So basically, my main panel is right on the other side of the wall here, got an EV charger here. So basically, I just turned this side onto the grid because I'm back feeding from my building over here. My building right there, I'm back feeding it. As you can see that line right there, it back feeds into the sub panel in this part of the house. And then I just back feed it and feed the whole house and, and basically turn the grid power off over here. So I can run the whole house on solar. That's what I do a lot of times. But if you got a storm coming and you want your battery charged, that part of the house, just running solar, but still charge my batteries back by hooking up to the EV charger port here. So I got a, a 50 amp plug right up here and I just got a, basically an adapter here for the, but basically it's a 30 amp uh, plug over here. And as you can see right there, just ran it all the way over here to the building. And so got the charge verter plugged up and basically I just set it to communicate with one of my batteries in my stack. I'll go in here and show you. All right. And basically what I got here, so I wanted this uh, charge verter GC to communicate with one of the batteries. So I got this hooked up and I just hooked it up to one of my life power four batteries that I don't have communicate with all the other ones. You see, I got quite a few batteries. I got two racks over here and then I got several of them on the ground. So I have, you know, probably about 12 or 13 of them or something like that hooked up to the master inverter over here communicating with that. And so this one that I didn't have communicating since I wanted the state of charge on the charge verter over here. As you can see, it pops up and it's up there 87% right now. This is the next day, of course, but as you see, I got it communicating. So you're not supposed to have all the stuff hooked up at the same time to the state of charge for the charge for GC and your inverters. So basically what you have to do, at least what I did, you know, might not work for everybody. I have enough batteries where I can have plenty of solar coming into all the batteries. They're all still connected, but I don't have the communications going to every single battery. You can take one off connect it to the, uh, the charge verter so you know the state of charge or your whole system because basically it's going to be the same thing throughout all the batteries you know you're going to have a little difference here and there depending on how many batteries you got but to me that ain't a big deal some people like to uh, make that a big deal i just use the system let the batteries go up and down as long as you're charging your batteries fully and discharging them down to 30 percent sometimes hey the things are going to be fine so basically got it plugged up I hooked it up to the grid of the house, as you saw over there. I set the thing up to whatever, 100%, and told it to start charging at 90, and that way it would have just it just stayed charged throughout this whole event. And I used grid power on part of my house, just in case the power went out. Then I would have plenty of power because it's still cold out here. It is a, uh, it's almost noon the next day after the the little storm we had, and it's still icy out there. It is. It says it's 30 degrees out there now, but with the wind chills about 19. So basically all the bushes and stuff, let's walk outside and look at everything. So basically as you can see, like even like the top of the air conditioner here, you know, everything kind of off the ground is pretty, pretty still froze. It is melting some. And just cause we got a little, little bit of sun out here, not a lot, but basically I wanted my family to be able to have heat. So that's how I charge from the grid basically through an EV charger and you can hook up, you can probably direct wire the, the thing and all that kind of stuff, depending on how you have your system hooked up. But 
Uh, maybe one reason it used to be in the manual, I don't think it still is where it says not to hook it, run it to the grid, only to use it with a generator. But I don't think it says that anymore, not that I saw. So if you guys see that, hey, let me know down in the comments below. But uh, maybe one reason it said that before is had something to do with if you had uh, grid power going into your inverter and the neutral ground bomb, maybe they thought it would make a loop or something, but I don't think it will because it's going through the DC side. I'm not an electrician. I'm just guessing. So maybe that's one reason, but I haven't had a problem with the thing. So I still highly recommend doing it, especially for emergency situations when you got a storm or something like that coming because I want to have power when the power goes out. That's the whole reason I have backup power is for emergencies. And as you might be able to see, it looks like it's snowing a little, just a little bit now. Like There's got some uh, precipitation dropping down still. So, you know, maybe by tomorrow, I think it's supposed to warm up some and all the stuff should melt, even though some of it's melting now. But, you know, still 30 degrees, so it ain't going to melt too much. It's just on, like, the black uh, roof and stuff like that with the sun out. It is making it melt a little bit. But the solar panels... As you see, got a got a good layer of ice on it.